for today's video we're going to take a look at a Moldivo Mentor pinwheel calculator made somewhere in the 1950s or 60s. This machine is actually a WSR160 made by Walter in Germany. It was sold in the UK by the Moldivo Calculating Machine Company Limited and badged as a Moldivo Mentor. The introduction you've just seen will have been recorded at some point in the future, but for now let's have a look at the Moldivo Mentor as it came into me. The carriage shift levers here work OK moving the carriage to the right, but when you try to go back to the left it's very slow, so it's obviously got very thick old oil on the carriage, because it needs a bit of a helping hand, so that'll need a clean and an oil. The main crank handle here that you use for doing the calculations is very tight, and it also makes some weird noises as you turn it, so that will need to look at. The input register here, you have the levers to set your numbers into the register. The levers are very tight, and in the case of this end one, it doesn't move at all. So that will need looking at. The lever here resets the register and the counter. And it works OK, but then it doesn't spring back up, so that obviously needs oiling as well and the lever back here resets the input register and that's working okay but I think it could do with an oil too so I think the next thing to do is to get the covers off and have a look inside that should be enough panels removed from the machine to get all the oiling and greasing done I'll start by flipping it onto its back so I can work from the bottom up and I'll see if I can get the sticky carriage moving properly if I hold the release lever over here I can push the carriage across and you can see it's a little slow returning back to its start position so we'll get the runners and all the pivots under here oiled up. You can see the bell here that'll ring when you get an overflow in the machine. OK, that's the underside and the carriage sliders oiled and as you can see the carriage is now moving exactly as it should do. Next thing to look at is the register itself, oil the moving parts on that, and sort out this reset lever that is sticking. I'm just oiling up the carry mechanism on the register, and I don't want to apply tons of oil, so I'm just putting a little blob of oil on the end of a screwdriver, and then taking that and applying it to each pivot. That way I don't end up flooding it with oil. OK, that's all of the register oiled up and all of the number wheels are cleaned and everything's now working fine and the reset handle returns properly, so I think that bit is done. The next thing to look at is the pinwheel itself. You have the levers here to set the numbers into the pinwheel and the actual pins they raise are back here. So this is pin 9, 8, 7, 6 and so on back down to 1 which is well out of sight. And you'll see the pins gradually fall back in as I lift this lever back up. The little pin here that moves sideways is the carry pin. When um, a wheel gets up to 10 it'll then deflect one of these carry pins which will then move the next wheel on one click. So, a quick update. The pinwheel is now oiled and all the input register is working nice and freely. On top of that, when you turn the handle it no longer makes a nasty noise. That was just the old oil had got so solid that it was actually chattering all these discs as they rotated, making that horrid screeching sound. Having oiled the pinwheel I've also cleaned any remaining excess oil off because you don't want to leave it on there just to attract dust. So a quick update, that's all the moving parts oiled and cleaned and everything's now working fine and nice and silently. Um, so what I've got to do now is clean the case and put it back together and I've also got one of the feet to repair because the rubber's torn. So we'll have a look at that lot in a bit. OK, this is the last of the covers going back on. And then all I've got to do is make or repair the foot for underneath and then it'll be time to demonstrate the machine. For the torn foot, I've glued the tear together but that won't be very strong. The normal method of assembly for these, there's a screw and a washer that passes through the rubber foot 
and then it goes through another big washer that gives it the shape and then it screws onto the machine. So I've cut myself a disc of rubber which I'm going to insert underneath the first washer and glue it to the foot to give it some extra strength. And here's the completed foot. The glue's still setting at the moment, but with a bit of luck that'll do the job. So now the machine's back together, I think we can try it out to see if it's working properly. So if we put one, two, three, four into the input register and crank the handle forwards, you'll see the one, two, three, four appears in the output register. If I now add to that 5, 6, 7, 8, so we'll do 5, 6, 7, 8, and again crank the handle forwards, we end up with the answer 6,912. If we want to take away from that 4,756, we put 4, 7, 5, 6 into the input register, and to subtract, you wind the handle backwards. So I'll wind it backwards, and we end up with the answer 2,156. So I'll just clear the output register and the input register with those handles there. If we want to do multiplication, if I put in 256 into the input register, if I want to multiply that by 5, I simply crank the handle forwards 5 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you'll see it's showing 256 multiplied by 5, because the counter shows how many times I've turned the handle, giving the answer 1280. So I'll reset the output register and the input register again. If I now want to multiply my 256 by 128, I don't have to turn the handle 128 times. In the units column, I'll turn it the 8 times, so... So there we go, we've done the 8 times. I'll now shift the carriage across to the right one using this button here and I'll turn it the two times, like that, and then I'll shift it across one more and turn it one time. So you can now see my 256 has been multiplied by 128, giving the answer 32,768. I think that'll do for this video. I'll leave the full demonstration for part two. I'll put a link to that video in the description when it goes live in about a week's time. If you've enjoyed watching, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage stuff and repairs coming soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.